welcome back to the Waffle Otter mini-series, a seven-episode daily vlog of Jeremiah Bishop and I doing two of the hardest races in the calendar while doing a five-day bikepacking trip in between. On the previous episodes, we raced BWR, then we got turned around and lost in LA, got way behind. On day three, we had to make up a ton of time and ride 150 miles. Today, we go from Solvang up to Slow. It's gonna be beautiful. All right, so two quick things about these. Uh, one is calories. How do you get enough calories in? And I would never drink orange juice from this little tiny can, but it, I'm ready to eat the can. Right now, we're burning on average between five to 7,000 calories a day, getting myself my little orange juice. Mm -mm -mm -mm. But I will say that the second Jeremiah gets a little bit hot and bothered, and, and, and it seems like he's under stress, uh, that is doping for me. I just get so much power and so much energy the second he shows a small chink in his armor. So, you know, not that he's like cracking or anything, but if he's not drilling it and riding away from me, I, I feel like validated as an athlete. And so, We'll see if he puts the hammer to me today, but right now I'm, I'm feeling good and I'm stoked. Man, it's been uh, quite quite a wild thing. You know, Tyler and I have this duality. Our personalities are very different. The two sides of it, and there's a lot of dynamics to the rides we do, the places we go, and you know, our personalities. And, and that's really what makes it kind of interesting, kind of makes it fun, and always leaves us guessing and wanting to come back for more. So uh, this has been really neat ride and you know i can't believe we're actually starting to feel better as the massive days stack up so i'm, I'm really stoked i don't know what's going to happen next but i'm really looking forward to seeing what happens next stop san luis obispo you win. the mountain right here so I have no idea how we're gonna get over the river all right so that you know part of this was navigation that was a big part of it I did not have the original route on so I when I made the on the fly adjustment I I'm taking all responsibility for the routing right now didn't see that we were turning right um, where are you navigating us to I mean, the, the destination is Pismo, but I see that we, we're gonna go past where you had, but we're still cutting up over. Okay. So. All right, it's an adventure. But I would say. Normally we have a set route and you have the routes possible or impossible. And this one is like, choose your own destiny. So, so far the theme has been things just work out. Every little issue we've had ends up being actually works out way better than originally planned and so i made a small little oopsie i made this adjustment we went parallel on the highway road rips cool points for me but we've completely cut out and detoured his original route there's no way to get back to it now so we're up for just an adventure we're gonna see how it goes but i'm on the hook here if uh if I mess up this route, my bad. Just moments later, it was in fact his bad. We got it, we got it. We're good. It's like a beaver dam. Well, uh, here's the thing. And it's called reality. We are once again crawling through the sand. Yeah, all right, all right, let's go. Can you tell me about this Red Bull infused smoothie? Can I just have a double espresso? Just, just the espresso. Thank you. So we haven't stopped yet today. Uh, we're four hours 
Have we stopped today? Bro, time just runs together. It's the wildest thing. I don't even know where I'm at or when I'm at. When I'm in charge of navigation, everything is great. Everything is grand. We're on the best roads. We don't stop. We don't zigzag. The second Jeremiah takes over, he's like, I'm gonna get us to a coffee shop. Here we go. All, we just, just doing loops. Here, there, over there, over curbs. The vegan seems to have quickly forgotten about taking Jeremiah through a beaver dam. Jeremiah will surely become agitated if this behavior persists. All right, we're on a big climb, coming over the coastal mountains, the ocean's right over there in the distance. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't really know anything about Jeremiah's uh, family history. And I'd like to hear from you on your father and how that's impacted your growth as a human and how you've dealt with that through your life. My mom was a free spirit. She ran away from home at like 18 to go to Maine with her best friend and hang out with her grandmother. Met my dad, who is also kind of a hippie. I didn't really know much more about it than that. You know, he had gotten into drugs and alcohol after having my sister and brother, you know, it got worse and worse. And so my mom was like, oh, we're out. And uh, my grandmother picked her up, brought her to Maryland, you know, helped her take care of the kids. So really owe my grandma huge there. You know, sometimes we wouldn't have a car. We're like pushing that grocery cart across the big four lane highway. Kids holding hands, trucks spraying water at you. For me, my dad or my relationship with someone I've never met really, after age like three or four, uh, was to be not like him. <laughs> when I realized how much of my competitive drive and just fire was pent up, you know, intensity and rage. And like, was well, what it was, the cycling was therapy for me. It was a way to get out and smash, of course, have fun too. Uh, but now I think I have a much more healthy and balanced approach. And, you know, I try to be the best dad I can be to my kids and just love them unconditionally. It's so wild how parallel uh, our lives are. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Max here with us. He's gonna ride with us back into Pismo. He's gonna take us on a little locals only trail with some cliffs and something cool. Yeah, just a little neighborhood, little beach tour with uh, some cliffs and a nice little park. Ew. See man, locals, locals know what's up. Yeah, homeboy. Oh, I mean, <laughs> I mean, he likes peeing off of high spots. It's like a thing for him. Who doesn't like peeing off high spots? <laughs> I guess you're afraid of like heights, but spitting off like yeah. a Ferris wheel, just watching it. Like you just have to do it. <laughs> yeah. right? Cheap thrills. Cheap thrills. Well, I mean, they say the best things in life are free. Let's say this yeah. beach. No. Max is leaving us and Felix Felix is joining us yeah. and there's a woman doing karate awesome let's go we're on Sea Canyon Road I love this road like this is one of my all-time go-to's if I'm staying in Avila Yes.
Hi. And so then there's like unique rooms, like mm -hmm. e each one of them has some sort of unique theme or? Yes. Every single one is different. So there's 110. 110. Yeah. And it started off with 12 wow. rooms. Um, they had that for a couple years and then actually burned down and then they had to rebuild it again. And then they just started adding on the other buildings. Just so you can see what those look like, I have the Fabulous 50s left. I have 126, the Independence. 105 here, mm -hmm. Italy. Cool. One, don't really want to spend like a thousand dollars a night to stay in one of the super bougie rooms. Uh, and the, the ones that got some rock features, those are already booked. So we had a few options. We had Italy, Independence, Imperial Family. We did not go with either of those. We went with a different one. And I'll show you that one. And we voted unanimously on it. <laughs> Fabulous 50s. What the heck? Oh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this is very 50s. Whoa, look at this bathroom. Very cool. Dude, this bathroom is nuts. It's a palace bathroom. <laughs> wow. What she said was that uh, it has nothing to do with actually Madonna. That was their last name was the Madonnas. And he was a construction like mogul and she was an interior decorator so he built them and then she really wanted to have fun to decorate so they decorated 12 unique rooms it burned down they rebuilt it and now they have 120 unique rooms every one of them is unique now some of the top tier ones are way super expensive and only has one bed those are like the iconic jungle and cave and medieval but we need two beds so Mmm, it's gonna be so good. Actually get to sleep. Eat, eat dinner, like, before 10 p.m. <laughs> and then actually get a full night's sleep. We've been kind of, like, on the back foot ever since BWR, and so I think, like, we're finally up to schedule. So we're, we're on schedule, finally. No! He's in the X Games! <laughs> I haven't done that on the hard tail before. That's so sick. What happened? My crank arm is broken. Oh, shit. Oh, oh boy. Dude, that's why it feels weird. My this oh, fucking boy. crank arm is absolutely. Oh. Snap.